with me. Get out! Why are you still here? <laughs> can you do that whole thing with your face turned down like that? Yeah, I can keep you do, it? do my wrap up, but you keep interrupting my wrap up, so I can't do my wrap up. <laughs> Today I'm here with my Spookathon wrap up for 2017. I actually did pretty well this readathon, so I'm very proud of myself because I honestly did not think I was going to even finish one of the books I said I was going to. I definitely changed my TBR a little bit. I ended up finishing four out of the five books that I planned. Without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I finished was Haunting Violet by Alexandra Harvey and I read this for the challenge of read a book with a spooky word in the title. So haunting is my spooky word. And I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows a girl named Violet who has been helping her mother pretend to be a psychic medium for as long as she could remember. And one day she goes to this client's house who is a wealthy duke and she ends up actually seeing a ghost herself. The ghost that appears was a girl who was murdered on the grounds a year ago and she decides that she is going to help discover who her murderer is. I thought that Violet was pretty bland and boring. Although she could be feisty at times, I just didn't really connect with her at all. Violet's mother infuriated me. She was honestly just a terrible human being and I did not like her at all. I liked Colin and how protective he was of Violet. Overall, the book was okay. It was average. I didn't think that it was anything super special, but when I was reading it, it was entertaining enough to make me keep reading it and wanting to know who the murderer was. Definitely did not see who the murderer was coming, so that was fun, but I don't think it was anything, like, overly amazing in my opinion. The next book that I have is The Hatching by Ezekiel Boone and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I read this for the challenge of read a childhood fear and it's all about these carnivorous spiders and if that doesn't creep you out then like are you a human? Because personally I don't even like spiders, so carnivorous spiders are just a no-no for me. The cool thing about this book is that it actually takes place in the span of one week. The spiders start in Peru and they slowly spread across the world and I just think that it was like a super cool concept to have the book just set for one week. It was average. Again, it wasn't anything special to me. It was creepy while I was reading it just because like ew spiders but it wasn't anything like that's going to be memorable in my opinion. There were a lot of characters that you had to keep track of but they were all super one dimensional in my opinion. Nobody really stood out as that important in the story. The writing style made the book really easy to read and I finished it in like one or two sittings so that was really good for a readathon but again nothing really that special in my opinion. The book does end on a cliffhanger and I believe that the second book the skittering or something like that is already out and I believe that the third book is coming out very soon so if you guys are interested in carnivorous spiders there you go there's two more books that you can read the next book that I picked up is The Outliers by Kimberly McCrite this is the book that I changed on my TBR I had The Knife of Never Letting Go as well as The Fifth Wave on my TBR but I thought that they were like way too chunky of books to read for a readathon so I decided that I was going to read this one instead and count it towards two challenges which is kind of a stretch I did the orange on the cover which like there's a little tiny bit of orange in the fire part of the cover so like kind of cheating but whatever and I also read this for the creepy setting challenge so technically I did complete all five challenges with only four books so pat on the back JM. I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars I actually really enjoyed it a lot of people don't like this book because they say it's like too far-fetched but in my opinion that made the book even more like entertaining. This book follows Wiley whose best friend Cassie has gone missing. Jasper, Cassie's boyfriend, shows up at Wiley's house and then they receive a text message saying that Cassie needs their help. So they decide to travel across the United States to go to this camp out in Maine and rescue 
Cassie. Again, a lot of people were like, that's way too far-fetched, that would never happen. But like, honestly, I thought that it was super entertaining, super thrilling. I was like flipping through the pages needing to know what happened next. I really liked it personally. Kimberly McCrae is one of my favorite like thriller authors, so I feel like that's one of the reasons why I like the book so much, just because I like her writing style so much. I don't know if that's actually the reason why, but I recommend this book. I really enjoyed it. And then the final book that I read was for the thriller challenge, and that was Friend Request by Laura Marshall. This was the book that I was like the most anticipating because I wanted to read it for so long. I am so glad I finally got to it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I thought it was so dang good. It follows a girl named Louise who was friends with a girl named Maria Weston back in high school and now years later in 2016 she receives a friend request from Maria on Facebook. The only problem is is that Maria died back in 1989 on the night of their prom. Louise also played a role in her death so she needs to figure out who is behind this Facebook page and what they know about that night before it is too late. So as I said, this was one of my most anticipated reads when it first came out. I had a feeling that I was going to absolutely love it, which I was correct. I thought it was so good. Right from the, the very beginning of the book, I was drawn in. I needed to know everything that was going on and who was behind this Facebook page. Like, I was so invested in this story. The writing style made it so easy to read. It was really, really, really simple and it flew by so quickly. The story is told in alternating timelines from 1989 and 2016. So as the story progresses, you get little tidbits of information that help you like put together the mystery and who might be behind the Facebook page, but you also get little tidbits about what actually happened to Maria that night, which was so cool because I thought I had it all figured out and I definitely did not have it figured out at all. It slowly like gets revealed how Louise is part of Maria's death, which I did not call at all. I had this whole other thing in my mind about what it was. The storyline was super fast paced and exciting, but it had like just the right amounts of suspense thrown in there for good measure. I constantly had these ideas flowing through my head about who was behind the Facebook page and I was definitely completely wrong about who I thought it was. Louise was a very unreliable narrator which made it even better and more confusing which I personally like because I don't like being able to tell the ending and I definitely could not have told the ending of this book. All of the characters were super well developed. I loved all of them. Henry, Louise's four-year-old son, is the cutest child in the entire world. Like, I just want to protect him forever. The book definitely did not feel like a debut novel and I'm a hundred percent going to be trying to find more of her books when they are released. Alright guys, so that was my spookathon wrap up. Actually, I think I did pretty well for once during a readathon. Usually I read like one book, maybe if I'm lucky, but I got four out of five done. I finished all five challenges, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Let me know down below what you read, if you've read any of these books, and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!